Assalamu alaikum. We'll be getting started pretty soon, shortly, inshallah. Just bear with us. Just waiting for everybody to sign on. Oh, yeah, Lord. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, what like <laughs> so the background you got going on? <laughs> I was I was working on a um a co conversation with Hussein, and this is the Red House land in the background. But <laughs> <laughs> I oh, forgot because well uh, yesterday we, we were on the um I was I was on the Arthur account. Let me get rid of this. <laughs> 
Oh man, that's funny. Okay, there we go. All right, let's see. I think we, I think Mubarak will just jump on. Inshallah. Um, so did you have time to pull them, or we're just gonna just kind of go through the clips, like just click on whatever. All right, so I'm gonna let's maybe see. co-host, and then I got you. I think I did. Then I did. I know. Make yeah, anyway, co-host. Yeah, I got you. All right. Um. So <laughs> first thing first, assalamualaikum everyone. Uh, welcome to the R2F Pop Up Show. Uh, we are doing this pop up show uh, because there was a video that came out from uh, Timoy uh, Historical Facts or whatever the channel's name is. Uh, they it was called that before. I don't know what it is now. They probably they probably uh, rebanded it to what it is now, um, and um, uh, they probably rebanded it now to whatever it is. Uh, but it was a sister on there who you know gave some accounts of her story uh, involving Mubarakilani from the Dar Islam to after the, the Dar Islam when Bartolani came and she was uh, going over some accounts, which um Alhamdulillah, uh she had the courage to speak up and say what she had to say. Um but we have to we have to point out the falsehood whenever we see it. Um and no one gets to uh escape that because you know if, if you're if you're brave enough to you know um yeah. speak upon something and be a part of it then you know you have to be a part of it at all times even when you're wrong. So uh, inshallah, uh, we'll try to be respectful um, and not go AWOL. Yeah, I mean, so alhamdulillah, salat to us on MR, Rasulullah, so they um, So we're just going to get right into it. We're not going to waste too much time. It's a pop up show. Um, may Allah guide us, um, guide us all, and help our tongues in this. Um, to me, when I was watching this this video, I was just a little bit just, it's just sad, um, especially when you see like the elders of the community still stuck on this stuff, you know, and then, you know, for anybody that's just listening, especially people that are still like in the cult of TMOA, they're probably hearing it and just probably hearing like just a regular story. But for everybody who's outside of that fishbowl and looking back in on it, there's so many things that are said that just kind of like brings out the highlights of like this whole cult mentality. And, um, she tells a story. We're not going to play the whole video. Um, we're just going to go through some of the some of the clips. And I think the first one that we have marked is at the one fourteen mark. Yep. So we're right right over here. All right. All right. So let's just play that to like one forty four. Have tea and of course sweets, um, and then talk about topics dealing with the history of the Jamaat mainly, because you know we elders are returning and a lot of what we did how all the things we did being with shaji um we want to get this out to y'all so that you'll know what we did what we had to sacrifice all right so uh the lovely smart intelligent human beings in r2f right they pointed out how uh you can see here uh at 137 she wants to say suffer all right but says sacrifices instead because you know she has to mask it because she knows inside, like, yeah, yeah, listen, we went through a lot of unnecessary stuff because of this man. Uh, so, so just pay attention to that. You can see from her body language and stuff, she's she's holding she's holding a lot of things in because if you have to go back and live it, it's probably hard as hell, um, especially mm -hmm. knowing what actually happened. It wasn't roses at all. So, um. Shaji told you that your parents have sacrificed a lot so that you can be where you're at at this point. And we just wanted to... And so pause it right there. So I just wanted to bring up that. Um, so she mentioned how like the elders of the community are passing away, which mm -hmm. which makes it sad because unfortunately some have passed and they've passed upon this falsehood. But she mentioned the sacrifice, the suffering of whatever they went through yep. to get y'all to this point. And I really want you guys to stop and think about what point y'all are at right now. We have you got to, yep. You have a, a female imam who your supposed holy Ahlabate family, Sheikh's family that's so guided and sent by Allah are literally showing how ghetto and ratchet and they are right, right in the public, mm -hmm. right? You have, you know, later on in the video, she starts talking about like, you know, moving to the lands and the longest hijra and all this and how they, you know, out of the ghetto and all these different things where most of the people 
in TMOA still live in the ghetto, whether it's subsidized projects in the nearest cities, subsidized housing, Section 8 housing, or the actual ghettos on the actual lands. Yeah. Right? Because like if y'all yeah. came on top, you had the picture of the land in the background. It's just the ghetto in the country. Uh, uh, yeah, like th- this whole idea that because you live in a rural place where there's trees around that you aren't in the ghetto. No, uh, all the lands are trailer parks. I, I don't know who doesn't know this. You guys, just because someone buys a double white trailer and puts two of them together, so it, it's a one-story house, it's still a trailer. You just put two of them together. Um, so mm-hmm. all of them are trailer parks. There's trash, all the lands. I, I've been to every land besides the one in uh, Tennessee and Canada, I think. All the lands that I've been to are all ghetto. There's trash there. The grass is hardly ever kept. Mm-hmm. Um, so all the stuff that goes into it. Um, it's so, like a third world country. You, yeah. you, really go, you come from the United States of America, drive through some back roads, oh. and then look in, it's like, oh my gosh, I'm like in like some third world country. Yeah, like but, um, uh, in, in the land of Michigan, there was this one house or trailer, sorry, there was one trailer where literally the family lived there. And it was just a giant hole in the middle of the trailer that was like, and it was cold in the trailer because I mean it's it's cold in yeah. Detroit, so it's just cold. It's just a giant hole. And I'm like, oh, hold on, like we have to carry y'all over the over the hole so you don't fall in as kids. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, this is fun. Uh, anyway. And and for you, for you elders that are listening to this or people that were around from the beginning, whether you were a, ch- a child at that point or an, or an adult, and actually can reflect at the position that you were in at that time. And then thinking of what where you would be 40 years from then, right, to get to this point where you are right now. Is this all you imagine and hope for? Is this what you foreseen? Your sheikh has passed away. No, no global jihad, no Mahdi, no nobody leading armies, nobody like leading countries and all these different things that you were promised. Is this what you had in mind? Instead of looking back at the past, which you know, this whole thing is just about it's nostalgia. And for anybody who knows anything about like escaping abuse, escaping toxic situations, nostalgia is one of the, the biggest enemies to like obtaining freedom. Yep. Because you look back on things and you generally have good free feelings about looking back because you are with your friends, your families, you had good times, even though you went through tough times, you know, you kind of forget how bad it was and remember like the good things. Oh, we had a lot of fun. And this is what she kind of goes through in this video, but really stop and think. And I really want you to ask yourselves and really truthfully contemplate on where you guys were 40 years ago. And are you in a better situation now? And are you in the position that your Sheikh, your Morshid promised that you would be in at this point? Yeah, but was it worth it in the very end? All right. So. Yeah. Because I think I the next clip starts at 231. Well, um, who- it stops where it starts there. Oh, it's right there? Okay, yeah, go ahead. No, it starts here, yeah. I was still living in Brooklyn, and at that time, there was two streets that the Muslims basically moved. There was an apartment complex between Georgia Avenue and Alabama Avenue, and Muslims started moving into the complex. And the, land, the landlord, the owners of the complex, was very happy to have us there because while as we moved in, bad elements moved out. And you, they knew we didn't drink, we didn't fight, you know, we didn't tear up apartments, we didn't do drugs, anything. So they were very happy. So basically, we took control of Georgia and Alabama Avenue. And we raised our children with confidence that nothing would happen to them. Um, yeah, and- so pause it right there. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, we've been saying this for yeah, This kind of just, just debunks the whole theory that the other old heads try to try to persuade it. Like, oh, uh, the members of the Dar Islam were drug addicts. They were... Alcohol abusers, crack cocaine. They were in the industry the game. All this stuff. No, this isn't like I'm. I'm sure in in every um, subset population of society, you will have those members who are doing doing drugs, alcohol, mm-hmm. criminal. But for the most part, that's not society. Like not everyone's a criminal. Um. So this idea yeah. that Barjali saved y'all from the inner cities and, and turned y'all from these ghetto hoodlums into these pious saints, shakes, uh, Sufis, mm-hmm. isn't the case at all. Um. And every yeah. every darling Islam person will tell you that. And and it's funny because like they just everything I mentioned this before, everything that there there is no defense of TMOA and Mubarak Jalani. There's no defense. Yeah. Anything that they put out is oh can always be used as a evidence against themselves. Yeah. So right here, she is contradicting her new Sheikah or Marshida 
that we just had a video she put out several months ago about how bad the Darl Slam was. And she's talking about how good the Darl English Slam or, was. Or, well, she said, the, right. she, she said uh, they were having a lot of English or something like that. Like, again, you, you can never use blanket statements for individuals. Like, sure, there may have been mm-hmm. some who are new to Islam, like Dr. mentioned how his parents were new to Islam. And so for a while before they learned Arabic, they were, uh, or learned mm-hmm. source Arabic, they were in English. Okay, which is cool. Um, but this isn't the case for everyone. That's not how it works. Like, Blake's yeah. statements never, never are true. Um, there may have been some of the Dar who who did this X, Y, and Z. But for the most part, from uh, what we know of the Dar of Islam, it wasn't like they were just all just dumb, idiot, uh, black yeah. folks who needed us a savior. No, this this inferior context we have is insane as African-Americans. Yeah. yeah. Weird. And they were moving away from, like, anybody that was involved in the violence, for the most part, they were making an attempt to move away from yeah. that type of lifestyle into a Muslim lifestyle. Then what happened? When Bar Jelani came, and all of a sudden, it. y'all started killing people, murdering mm-hmm. people, blowing stuff up, assassinations, fire bombings. So y'all went from that place where like landlords were like happy to have y'all there because bad elements would would leave mm-hmm. to a place where like now a landlord would be like who are these people that are killing people? Who are these people that are like? I mean, come on, like it's just, and, but you can't even see that you can't even see this stuff. So you ignore all the negative stuff and just pay attention to like these these talking points that you guys have developed over the last four decades. Yep. And it's not even like they're talking uh, to you. They're talking at you. It's like, OK, well, <laughs> this happened and that happened. But really, there's nothing to verify these claims. Um, and so all the things that the Dar Islam accomplished, uh, Mubarak Jelani and the Jamaat didn't accomplish that at all. Uh, it actually kind of regressed us like went backwards as a society um and we see yeah. this uh as it goes on she can talk about the schools yeah blocks from where we lived and that was our musala that was our um school so we would uh, prior to that muslim pro no madrasa Day, somebody get the tea buildings, yeah, yeah. and we found a space <laughs> to move the whole school into one <laughs> building the first floor was the, the where the uh, juma slide so we could pause it here so i mean just just more of like she's just mentioning that they had a school, they had a whole yeah. school, they had a musalla, they had a, a place where they prayed, they had a, a, a up and coming thriving Muslim community, and look at that forty years down the road, and you you have all these makeshift, you have a few makeshift schools in the Jamaat. Yeah. Um. Don't you guys think you should have progressed beyond what you had before Mubarak Zani came? 40, you had yeah. the perfect guide that came. Shouldn't you guys have like blossomed and have like universities and all these different things by now? What you should be is some of the like leading, like if Mubarak Zani was not even all, if he was a quarter of what, what he claimed, you should have some of the most advanced scholars in Islam um, and just all of that because if if a quarter, so, so okay, so let's see. So some of the claims he had. So let's see. Uh, God, right? So he wasn't that, right? Uh, the majority of the century, right? right? wasn't what wasn't that? Um, seven mm-hmm. Sultan of Fuker, what, 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 what wasn't that? Uh, spiritual guy for all mankind, wasn't that, right? So if he was just mm-hmm. one of those things, one, then this community of the, the Jamaat would be so far advanced and so blessed because they say all the time, "Oh, our community is so blessed." Blessed how? Explain to me how how you guys are blessed. Because we see communities that have been blessed. They work, they get things things done. Like when they need masjids built, they built masjids uh, and get it done relatively fast. Is the masjid yeah. in New York land ever done? Has it ever been finished? Because I think, they, for as long I think as, they just got sheet rock up. For as long as I've I've been alive, they have been yeah. working on that masjid. Um, and it's, it's mm-hmm. not, not, not done yet. Like the sewer in South Carolina land, the sewage smell, as long as I've been alive, they're working on getting rid of that smell. The roads on every land, long as I've been alive working on the roads. It hasn't yeah. got done yet. So what like what have you accomplished? Where's the fruit of your labor for the sacrifices yeah. and suffering you guys did um for those 40 exactly. years? Yeah. And then we go to the 527 mark. That's good enough. Um because of our training in the dar, we were taught that you didn't make a big deal about his birth the birthday is for Sula so so um, to the point that yeah. um if you were teaching when I was teaching and we happen to notice, oh, tomorrow's, you know, the 12th of Rabi Allah. Then we would give a class the next day. Okay, today's for birthday of our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And we give a whole thing about his family, blah, blah, blah. And then the next day we go into something else. And that was... Yeah, okay. So, uh, <laughs> and, and not to get into the whole bidda or not bidda of, of celebrating Rabi Allah, because there's a lot of different fatwas on this. 
Um, but for the most part, uh, the the way the Jamaat celebrates the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi birthday so, and the Milad al Nabi is so extravagant. And uh, there's others who say you can just like fast on the birthday. That's, that's sufficient. But for the Jamaat, right, uh, during my time there, right, we're making to solve around like the shrines and stuff and, and having parades <laughs> and stuff. And so so it, it's totally yeah. like, even if it was permissible in some views, the way y'all went about doing it is so extreme. Um, and Islam yeah. has to stay away from extremities. So like, I don't, I, I don't well, know. she gets into like she she and then like let her play for another few more minutes and she you the basically you get any type of remembrance or celebration, and so because other Muslim countries they have a whole big um celebration. Pause it. That and right where, there. Where that's it. Well, the the other like Pakistan they do. Okay, um, yeah. Some of the Shiite run countries they do. That's the, um, that's basically what I was gonna say. It's like, but like man. what Muslim countries do in their countries is does not establish what, what islam is, is islam does, yeah Muslims. exactly right? i mean <laughs> if she, if she would have said like okay in mecca and medina they do this right then every muslim mm -hmm. country should follow suit because that's mecca and medina right but right <laughs> i mean yeah and, uh, and again, it is well, go ahead. if you're gonna have like uh, a reason to do to do something you should have at least some support like okay we do this because of because of this hadith right here and based off of what, mm -hmm. what this hadith says here, we do this, right? Um, this is a hadith of a, of a Sahaba, uh, Hazrat Umar, or something like that. So we're going to follow this hadith of the Khalifa afternoon, and then we're going to use this yeah. as our basis to support this. They just say, yeah. because we live out of bake. Yeah. And, you know, the thing is, like, the, the, what she described, what they did for the Maulad before um, Mubarak Jalani had them doing the, the, the all right Christmas-like celebrations, mm -hmm. um, was actually like a, a like closer to like the moderate correct way of what we are supposed to do, even those that even even the the fat was that say that it's okay to like celebrate the Malad. This is how they say to do it, right? Yeah. You don't have a party. You don't like like you you go over the Sira. You talk about his birth. You go like these types of things. You not have a big elaborate Christmas like party, you know. Um, so it, it's just it's just interesting that, you know, they they had I mean, it's just you can see the clear misguidance that Mubarak Jelani came with. And and she kind of like without even realizing it. And we'll get into it. And she just pay attention to how she describes their cult brainwashing. Yeah. So like if you go if you go to the five, what is it? The six twenty five mark, mark yeah. is where the setup, the setup begins from Mubarak Jelani. And one thing I'm noticing from Mubarak Jelani is that he was a very good manipulator, which most cult leaders have to be. He was a very good manipulator. He, he, you see, he exhibits all the tactics that manipulators do, and this is one of them that he does. And, you know, one of the things I have to say, Shaji, when he first came, he said, read Holy Quran from cover to cover, and then read Sayyid Bukhari hadith, and I think that's eight. All right, wait, wait. <laughs> Oh yeah, all right. Listen, so if Mubarak Jelani actually followed his, because Jaffa mentioned this about how he's a perfect manipulator, right? And in the chat, he talked about how um, one of the things about being a good manipulator is that you draw attention to things that you should avoid, um, so that way people don't suspect you of doing such, right? So Mubarak Jelani telling you to read Bukhari cover to cover, the Quran cover to cover. If if he read the Quran cover to cover and Bukhari cover to cover and Muslim and all the other books hadith, um, and he came away with his ideologies and thoughts and beliefs after that. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah. it's just, yeah, uh, that, that's crazy. <laughs> or nine volume hadith, read it like a bed book that you read at your bed steps, a table. So when I tell you something, you will know that this is coming from Holy Quran or hadith. Yeah. So pause it right here or okay. right here. That's, that's, that's what you call the, the bait and hook yeah. right there. Right. So like, as Amr said, if I am trying to scam you, right, let's just, just take it to like a car salesman, mm -hmm. right? So a, a tactic that a, a good car salesman will do is tell you how car salesmen are always trying to scam people. Now, automatically, you have your guard down. You're like, well, if he's if this car salesman is telling me yeah. that all carsmen, all calls, call, car, car salesmen, salesmen are yeah. scammers, then he obviously isn't one, mm -hmm. right? 
So the same thing with Barak Jelani saying is like, okay, read the Holy Quran and 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 the Hadiths, right? And talking about Sahih Bukhari. Yeah. No one's gonna re- you could read through Sahih Bukhari. There's no way you re- everything. Re- yeah. remember even like one like one volume worth of hadith. Yeah. You'll just have a vague idea of like I hadith, right? So that's one thing. Two, most people aren't going to do it. That's two. Yeah. So no one's gonna be able to like say, hey, I remember this hadith from this cover. Why are you saying this wrong? And three, now you let your guard down. Yep. And then what's and you and now she explains it because that once I heard this, I was just like, here we go again. Once once she said this, now they're going to automatically start tricking themselves, brainwashing themselves to the thinking that everything that he says is from the Quran and the Sunnah, from the Quran and the Hadith. And she ex- she goes through this whole process telling her story of how it actually happened to them without even realizing it. Yep. And to piggyback off of what Joshua said about the car salesman, right? Because I've had jobs where I've done sales. The idea is after you get the trust, you say, but for you, right? I have a deal just for you, right? So you, you make them special. So for Mark Delaney, like he's coming to them with the idea that, hey, but just for y'all though, for y- y'all are the chosen community that I came to get myself personally, and I will help lead mm-hmm. you to the promised land. So he yep. tells them, okay, be careful of this person. But also, I am this person that's different from that person. Well, I'll guide you all to the... Because for a lot of yeah. folks in the Jamaat, who Barjolani is viewed as their, like, get out of hell free card. They're, they're going to mm. use him. It's like, okay, like, he says, I will intercede for you. I'm the fourth question in the grave, all right? So all this make-believe uh, Sufi crap, right, that, that he has spouted over the years, he's mm-hmm. he used on y'all when you're like, okay, hmm, who's this person? Avoid this person. But also, trust me, though, because now your guard's... Yeah. Let down, and also, you know, I could be an Arab, all right, maybe. Um, so <laughs> and it's funny, it like, so real quick, like you meant it, remind me of just of an incident of you have this guy who's coming when he first came to y'all. He said, You know, make sure you're studying the Quran and Hadith so that you make sure that everything I'm saying is correct, right? Mm-hmm. And you also had the same man who years later was giving a speech to his followers and allegedly acted like Rasul or some took possession of his body. And started speaking to them and then guaranteed them all paradise. Yep. Like this, this is this is the guy you're talking about. Yeah, you know, and then she, 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 and, it, and it's funny because this this clip started at like 6 30 something. And within th- she started off talking about Quran and Sunnah. We have to make sure he's sticking to the Quran and Sunnah. This is what he told us. Within 30 seconds, yeah, she gets to the point where it's like. All right, we don't care about the crown of Sunnah. She doesn't say it, but listen to what she says right now. By that time, as time went on in between classes and reading and thickers and what have you, we had, even though we had bayat with him, those who did, we still, our trust and our iman in following him had gotten stronger. So this oh, particular year, there it is. he wasn't yep. in the States. He- That's it. And- so she went from Remember, she went from before Mubarak Jelani, and remember, like this is what cult do- leaders do: they identify what you value, they mirror that value, then they slowly get you away from that value. So, if you look at the Dar al-Islam before Mubarak Jelani came, they were heavily upon: we're following the Quran and Sunnah. We're not going to even let like these 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 foreign Muslims like dictate what true Islam is. We're following the Quran and the Sunnah. You have her, she's teaching at the school, and she's teaching, you know, in accordance to the Quran and Sunnah. The Sheikh comes, identifies that, oh, these people are like really on the Quran and Sunnah. Okay, so I'm going to identify with that and say, you know what, make sure you're reading the Quran and Hadith, and to make sure that everything that I say is correct, which as a Muslim, no other Muslim should have to tell you that, right? This is like a, a standard thing in Islam. So now you're to identify with that. Then she got to the point, now she's saying, we had done these dhikas and all these other different things that our trust had built up so much in our iman in him him yes Keyword. iman and following him so much that we just trusted him so now yeah. it wasn't like now you're not even verifying what he says i guess the quran and sunnah because this whole story is about the malad at no point did she say She's mentioned multiple times, and I don't know if we'll cover them all, but she mentioned multiple times in the story how they had apprehensions, they were hesitant, they're like, where is this coming from? At no point in the story does she mention, like, we checked the Quran and Hadiths, and we we verified that it's okay to do it. We verified what he said was correct. 
All you hear her say throughout the whole thing is he told us to do it. So we did it. That's it. Yep. And that's, that's their Dean. And she mentioned how he wasn't like there. So he was overseas. And so one of the things uh, in order for you to build like a lore and mystique is you give folks a a taste, right? And then they never get to have it again for a while. Right. So from Barkilani, he came there, right. And he did what he needed to do. He then fled back to, back to Pakistan because he was on the no fly list, so he couldn't come back to America, <laughs> right? Uh, mm-hmm. And even though he could fly as a bird, anyway. Uh, so, <laughs> so, so this man went back overseas, right? And now his entire legacy is on the like idea of the old heads. So the old heads are just telling stories and mystical things. And and now, right? If someone tells a story, okay, well, I saw him move the moon, right? Saw him move the moon. Yeah, I saw him move the moon, right? And someone else can say, oh, well, 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 me, I saw him. He fell out of a car into a lake. And after I looked at yeah. the car, he was back in the car. Like none of that stuff happened. But yeah, someone has to outdo each other. So now, oh, well, the shake is special to me, too. And so then his story grows and none of this stuff ever happened in, in reality. But people are going to believe it because, I mean, someone said it to them. And so here we are 40 years later with folks is still like, he's he's talking to me from the grave. No, he's not. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, so play this one, play this for another like 10 seconds, and she just gets into like Pakistan, but he sent a message telling the administration that he wanted us to have a Malat celebration. And we're like, okay, what is that? He said, get lights. Tell the ladies to light up. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So <laughs> yeah. she she literally just said it right there, right? I wanted us to have a lot celebration. What is that? Because for them, it wasn't a thing. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's, it's like a lot of the like innovation and stuff, it came from him directly. Because at the end of the day, um, and as many channels as you guys make from the Jamaat, Team Away Youth, Team Away Old Heads, Team Away Middle Agers, Team Away uh, <laughs> Toddlers, I don't care. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, y'all can't just uh, be adjacent to the problem. The problem yeah. you guys have to face is still there. Mubarak Jelani, his teachings, until you guys denounce them and, and, and okay, yeah, this, this is Shirk Bidda then you can move on. But you're not just yeah. going to just make a thousand channels and be like, oh, we didn't talk about Seven Stones anymore. No, who's yeah. Seven Stones? No, no, no. This is the core foundation of your beliefs, um, of your leader's beliefs. Uh, he left his wife in charge. That's <laughs> like... It's literally like Kiamaway had cancer and there's a giant tumor inside of Tiamoe, mm-hmm. just like it would be inside someone's body. And then Alhamdulillah, R2F and others have identified, got a tumor in your body. And a lot of people, even that are still in TMR, recognize like, yeah, we, we got cancer. We got a tumor. But instead of like going to get the surgery to get rid of the tumor and get it out of your body, you're like, ah, you know, maybe we'll just start, you know, cut down on sugar going forward <laughs> or, or something stupid like that. Like maybe eat a little healthier going forward. No, you still got cancer. It's still there. You have to get it out. You have to. The root of the problem. Otherwise, it's going to affect everything y'all do. And it's re- again, it's it's really sad watching this stuff because I, I wish these these especially these older generations would really, honestly, critically look back at what they've been through and what has happened. Where you went from a community that was following the Quran and Sunnah, that was moving away from crime, violence, drugs, and all that, and now looking looking at what we know now. You have a community that does not follow the Quran and Sunnah, that is littered with shirk and bidda. We got the seven sultans, shirk. We got all the bidda, kissing graves, Mm -hmm. um, tawaf around masjids, tawaf around shrines, all these different things. Shrines. You have, yeah, you have people that, you you said, okay, you know, he he was getting us off drugs, allegedly. But we know you guys weren't getting away from off of drugs already, but you have a sheikh that is confirmed. He was taking mar- marijuana in his last last days, taking marijuana, something that's haram. So you have people that, was, oh, yeah, he got us off of drugs, even though he takes drugs, right? You have, oh, he got us away from violence, even though he told us to blow shit up. Like, yeah, repeatedly. Look where you're at. Yeah. So what's the next clip we got going on? Oh, yeah. We got, morning, okay. He sends a message saying, Shai just sent a message saying, have a parade. Like, to have a parade. Tell- okay, you see, so, so, like she's like, yeah, what? <laughs> she's like, eh, again, and for <laughs> for the old heads, because I feel like R2F has reached its like target audience the most with the old heads, right? 
The old heads yeah. talk about R2F more than probably any other generation. Uh, because mm-hmm. Uncle MJ, Uncle Avim, uh, because folks know oh Amber's on the show and Amber's parents are known amongst all the old heads. So they're talking to my <laughs> father. So so like like for the old heads, y'all know this is wrong. <laughs> y'all mm-hmm. know it. <laughs> like y'all know this is wrong. But I guess maybe you don't want to admit you're wrong because you're arrogant. But it listen before you pass away because. She talks about how you know they're you know dying. The older heads are passing on because that's what happens in life. Mm-hmm. As you get older, you closer to the grave. Before you pass yep. away, please like just say, "Hey, listen, <laughs> this man was wrong." All right, we we got duped. It's okay, right? Um, yeah. Because it it happened now, right? You guys can't go back in time and change it, right? So this isn't gonna just reverse itself. It happened now. What you what yep. you can do with the time you have left is to admit that you were wrong, all right? And say, "Hey, listen, he didn't move the moon." <laughs> yep. He didn't transform yep. into a bird. He went this cocoa figure. We were duped. It's okay. All right. The, like what do you, you know? It's cra- it's it's funny because like even in our own chat, like our R2F chat, we have all types of personalities in our chat. Like, you know, we but you see her reaction and she does it throughout the video where she's like, Oh god, what is that? Or yeah, like, she just we, like we were hesitant disgusted, yeah. Right. Whenever that happens, like in our dean. That's when we, as responsible, God-fearing, Allah-fearing Muslims, say, hey, where do you get that from? I don't care what it is. If you if you have some kind of apprehension or hesitation, that could be your fitra talking, saying, hey, um, stay away from that, right? Mm-hmm. So that's when the question should have been like, hey, um, where in the Quran and Sunnah does it say we do a parade on Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's birthday, yeah. right? Like how many times, even... In, you know what? You could you you could be wrong. You could have a hesitation because of your misguidance previous in your life. We run into it all the time in our our R two F chat, or even in different classes. You see it. Like how many times have we someone said, "Hey, as Muslims, we're supposed to do X Y Z or not do X Y Z," and then someone's not heard it before, and the first question he asks is like, "Hey, what's your support for that?" And it's never like, "Oh, how dare you ask me for support? Do you know who I am?" <laughs> no, people get hadiths, people get ayats, people pull the tafsir. And they get to the support for what they're doing. That's what we're supposed to do as Muslims. So for this is what y'all older generation should have. That's where y'all failed. And yeah. is he was telling y'all to do stuff and y'all weren't asking. We know why, because you might have been killed. You might get kicked out of the Jamaat, whatever you else, saw, negative yeah. consequences. But the next generations, this is what you guys should be instilling on them. Instead of that, that hear and obey, we hear and obey along with suicide song. Awesome. Anybody other than that, if something seems wrong, we have a responsibility to ourselves and those around us to say, hey, where do you get that from in the Quran and Sunnah? And if they can provide the support from the Quran and Sunnah, alhamdulillah, then you learn something new. And now when you go and tell other people, hey, go do X, Y, Z. And they say, hey, what, where do you get that from? Oh, there's this ayat and then there's this hadith and sahih. And, you know, this is what we're, this is our responsibility as Muslims. Yeah. Montage, banners, but like, oh, we're just so so happy, so proud to be doing this. And okay, like- so right here, uh, she's saying this, right? She, she's happy to do this, but the entire time when she's bringing up how it started, she is grimacing literally, like internally, like cringing, like, like I can't, I can't believe you did this. <laughs> so she, she has to, I say, listen, the old heads who are holding on to this belief, they have to say face. So even when body language. 50%, 60% of all communication. So you can tell mm-hmm. from her body language, her face is literally cringing. Yeah. And just like, yeah, I can't Good believe it. Just, but she's over here like, I was so happy we had a parade and we had the celebration mm-hmm. and the lights. It was just so great. It's not true. We, we can tell it's not true because you're masking this. It's, it's not something you wouldn't actually do. Well, so check it out. So here, here's a, here's a, I'm glad you brought that up. That's, that's a key observation. So in the point before the actual um event or the act the action occurred right before they're engaged in the action her picture was grimacing yeah. like eh, no i don't know like you can see like you said the body, body language and this is and uh, i'm not like again we're trying to we're staying away from the whole debate of like if it's a sin and all the, we're, the whole we're gonna get away from that but typically before you do something that you know is wrong before you actually do it you're like ah, i probably shouldn't do that right Let's just let's take it out of the sin context, right? You're trying to lose weight. You see a big, giant, nice, you know, dessert 
in the kitchen and you're like, ah, I, I probably shouldn't eat that. But once you start eating it, you actually feel pretty good eating it. Like, oh, this tastes good. Wow, this is, this all, is you know, great. You know, right? And this is, this is the case we have here because, yes, having a party is fun. Why wouldn't you have fun and feel good having a party? Getting together with your friends, doing something, drawing pictures, making signs. That stuff is fun. So, of course, you're going to feel good doing that. And this is what the, the religion of TMA members has boiled down to their emotions and their feelings yep. because the Maulad has has is it's not about prophet muhammad it's a social like activity it's a exactly yeah. social function they get dressed up hey do you get an outfit what you wearing what you cooking yep. oh that's what it is and and that's the thing for a lot of cults is that it's a societal and a social thing like like um Team away really is when you get down to it, it's, it's really like I say it all the time in the chat. It is the world's worst country club. All right. But <laughs> uh, but you know all the all the members, right? And for a lot of them, you grew up together, uh, your families know each other, you're probably gonna marry someone in the family. Um, so it's really just a, a big like family like club, right? Everyone knows each other, right? And you guys get together and you have celebrations. And even though no one has money, right? You guys do your best to get together and have a, a great time as best as you can. Um, you're all wearing nice clothes or the best clothes that you can find. Um, and you're with all your friends because you've known these, these, <laughs> you've known them since you were born, since like diapers. Uh, so now you're you're seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, all the all the years you know them, right? You guys are real close. And so um the reason why the Jamaat works so well is because the idea of kicking someone off of Jamaat, right? You lose that whole you, like it's a whole like ecosystem you have in Jamaat. And if you're not there where are you gonna find that same group of people that you know that are all close and tight-knit even though like a lot of people in your shady uh for the moment <laughs> as soon as you as soon as you're done with them you're just like be gone but uh yeah. while you're there it is the feeling of like brothership it, it, is so strong and that's why people keep more factor yeah. to the jamaat still like even though they're like yeah i know it's wrong but like my kids are there uh or my kids love going there because all their friends are there so this is what's yeah. hard for a lot of people when trying to leave the jamaat is that where do i go now and it's funny you say it because the next the next section that she talks about is directly that with with the lady that's like, oh, I wish I was with y'all, mm -hmm. right? Like, so she I keeps going. There was a woman, a lady that was uh, um, she was with her. They were with us during the dark. Her husband made um, Umbra stuffle. Her husband went on a killer with Shaji, came back and decided I'm not gonna be a part of this, mm -hmm. but she was still kind of wanting to be a part. So she came downstairs. I remember she was standing on Alabama Avenue next to her building and she just stood there with us. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember thinking, oh, God, I wish she could just be with us. She looks like I really would if it wasn't for my husband, I'd be right there with you. So- um, Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> uh, listen, I'm not married yet, all right? But <laughs> if I'm married to, to a, a Muslim lady, right? And she's like, I just really want to be with this, this other nigga. Bye. <laughs> like, you, <laughs> well, you if I, I didn't catch this the first time. The first time I heard it, I was listening to it on like two times speed and just kind of breathing. So I thought it was, they were talking about another family broken up at the beginning of the dark because one lady wanted, because we, we have examples of that, of, you know, yeah. husband or wife wanted to go with the new crew. The other one didn't. And then there was a split, splitting up families. I thought it was another case of that. But she's saying that the lady didn't participate yeah. because she's, she stayed with her husband who didn't follow Jelani. But Not what so I long. what I what I noticed here, and I gotta have to, have to you know, I'm trying to stay away from like criticizing her specifically, but you have to listen to what people said because she said, I had this thought that she was thinking. Yeah. That's so, those are those are your thoughts. <laughs> yeah, you have no idea what this lady's thinking. She could have been looking at y'all like, what y'all crazy kind of crap yeah. are they into? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But let's say she's true, right? So we don't know what the lady was thinking or what was going through her mind, if she wanted to be with them or not. How many lost she stayed with her husband, who I'm pretty sure she is 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 enjoying the fruits of that decision by staying by her husband who did not follow the cult leader Mubarak Jelani. Pretty sure she's happy about that. But let's say she was looking at all her friends, possibly family members, neighbors, children, maybe her children's in the house. They're all outside looking like they're having a grand old time. This is why people don't leave. Amr just mentioned it because she's looking like, dang, I wish I could just, you know, I want to go be with my people. 
mm-hmm. go have fun with my people, even though it has nothing to do with Islam, right? Well, I mean, a little related to Islam, but she didn't do it. But these those social, this the social part of it. I'm pretty sure the lady wasn't thinking, oh man, I really want to engage in this Sunnah. I really want to engage in this beneficial worship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, if she was regretting like not being out there with y'all, it was simply the fact of like, I want to go hang out with my friends. Yeah. Right. And that those that is not a way to base your religious decisions on. Yeah. Rasul Sarsam tells Rasulullah us Rasulullah. be careful who you take as your friends because you will be on the religion of your friends. Your friends yep. Even us who are like, we're like, we want nothing to do with TM away. But you know, and then you're like, man, I miss hanging out with the boys. I miss laughing. I miss playing ball. I miss joking around. We're humans. I- yeah, we miss that. But some of us, nah. <laughs> Some of us, but, <laughs> but there's there's nothing that would like you got to go by. There's nothing that would make me say, okay, I'm gonna be friendly, try to be friends with these guys just for the sake of nostalgia. Remember, nostalgia is a a very tricky thing when you're gonna disobey a law and do stuff that you know is not correct. How many times have people been, you know, jumped into sin, knowing it's wrong, not wanting to do the sin? But they just wanted to be with their friends. Mm-hmm. Um, How many times is that it happens? It's it's the it's the it's, I mean, it happens every single day, you know, to all of us. And uh, another we'll thing see. that we just like glossed over was when she was talking about how her the lady's husband went on Umrah uh, um, a kilowatt with uh, Shaji. So 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 like just you know just things you know on the side here. So. Yeah, oh, when he yeah, was they were the kill was when when they were having all these visions and people legit and even people that are in TM when they put it in their book, they thought they were getting drugged. They thought Barjani was putting LSD in their coffee and stuff. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. So <laughs> but you decide to follow the guy. It was yes, it, ridiculous. Yes, we're having spiritual trips with LSD. Dotage yeah. and people are crying. And back then Dotage was so emotional for us. Uh, another story. It's, Again, it's, it's just pause it. Just terrible. emotional emotions, crying emotions, emotions. In Islam, we don't make our decisions based Emotion, off our emotions. Yeah. Not, I mean, just life in general. It's not a good idea to make your decisions based off your emotions, right? This is one of the reasons. Well, this is when we look at like why men are supposed to be leaders and imams why men are the leaders of the households right one of the one of the um the, the wisdoms behind that that everybody mentions is that and we have we have studies even non-muslim studies scientific studies that show that men are more logical and rational mm-hmm. and tend not to let their emotions influence their decisions whereas women their emotions play a heavy part in their decision making and there's pluses and negatives in in, in different arenas of having those qualities right that's why you don't say uh, oh a man's better than a woman or vice versa we have our we have our traits we have our characteristics but in islam there's i am not aware of anything that says okay if this is you know you emotionally if you're emotionally attached to this then it's right no we look at the quran we look at the hadith we look at what allah said we look at what rasul said you know just because you were crying, you felt emotional, you were, you were, you know, you were emotional, you were happy, you were all these different feelings that were coming in. And not at one point did you reference anything from the Holy Quran and Rasuna to support what you were doing, to, to, to suggest that, like, you know, I was so emotional because I was getting all these blessings because Allah said you get such and such blessings for doing this on a maldad. Or a soul some said, do this on the mouth, lad, and you're gonna get come close to me. You don't you don't bring in none of that. All you're happy, you're happy about the fact that you're obeying your cult leader and all of y'all are having fun while you're doing it. That's mm-hmm. simply it. Keep them dancing and happy. That's when they do <laughs> Shazi told him to do Dar Salaam, mm-hmm. our Dar Salaam, that we thought for months, he was weeks that he was speaking in Arabic, we didn't know it was in English. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Bro, right, I'm gonna let you go ahead and have that one. She just exposed the biggest lie that was ever told to me in the Jamaat. Because while I was in the Jamaat, no one ever told me about the seven Sultana Fuku or any of the other bull crap that they spew, right? But what niggas did tell me was that this nigga was speaking English. All right. I promise you, <laughs> I promise you he was not speaking English. Well, like to this day, 
even when there's videos, he's like, oh, it's like, no, fam, what, what is this? Oh. He, 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 he has never been speaking English. And the nigga's like, I'm really scared. He's got to open your heart. She literally just said she, they thought he was speaking in Urdu. He was English the whole time. Yeah. His English has, has, has literally, <laughs> like, his English was bad 40 years ago, 30 years ago, 20 years ago, until the day he died. Like, yeah. he was never speaking English. So this, this moniker that if I just open my heart um, or if I believe in him hard enough, then I'll understand. All of y'all have been lying to me. There's, there's just no way. Because, because you know what's you know it's hilarious because so she, this is like she says this back in like '83 around that time, right? Mm-hmm. Around when when Barks on like first came, and you'll have people who will like deny that Mubarak Jelani taught the Seven Sultan concept, that he ever claimed to be the Six Sultan or anything like that, right? You have people who deny these things, but right here you have in the beginning years. And he said, they said, well, Mubarak Jelani taught them this the, nashi, that was, yeah. right? This uh-huh. not, yeah, which, yeah. uh-huh. which is very funny. So he taught them this. The whole thing behind this whole um, poem or whatever song is the concept of the seven sultans. And in fact, the part of the, the end song, the culmination part of the song honors Mubarak Jelani. So look at, look at where we're at now. We're on the Maulad, which is supposed to be about honoring Rasul Sallam. And he teaches you guys a song to honor himself. I, use your common sense here, guys. Right? And so anybody denying this whole thing about the seven sultans, about him claim, not claiming it, he's teaching you songs about it. You guys sing it after every Juma. You sing this song that is littered with shirk every Juma. You know, so oh, there's yeah. that. And I, I I hope we have time. I hope Bark jumps on so we can go over the, the, the shirk songs. But so so play this. I think they actually play like one of these shirt. They're singing one of these shirt songs right here. Um, we were like, wow, you know, this was fantastic. But because the first Milad, us from coming from a generation of, of that we thought it was haram to even celebrate. And then to see each year how much we progress. Because that year it was just Brooklyn. And then the next year, Shai said, do this and then have people come and then have people come. And even like when we started coming down here from the lot and we was so didn't sing it. So, but again, we talked about this in the beginning. She calls it progression, but really it's the opposite of progression. They're devolving or whatever, whatever the antonym to progression is. Um, he, he builds up more and more trust as the years go on more and more. They give themselves over to him and have no free will, have no common sense, have no ability to, look in at the Quran and Sunnah and see what they're doing is correct or wrong. And it just progresses onto there. So, you know, 40 years later, you have um, people making such it to his grave. I mean, this is what the, this is your progression that you have people that said that, you know, there were so, there was so there's, as far as the Malad goes, one, it is bona fide. No one can disagree about it. That it's a doubtful matter. Nobody can, if anybody comes on and says it's not a doubtful matter, they don't know what they're talking about, right? There's nuances into it. Some say it's permissible with certain caveats and exceptions. Some say it's impermissible. In the, whenever you have disagreements among the scholars, and, and the, it's at least a doubtful matter. You'll have some that say it's clear bidda and haram, and some say, like, nah, go ahead and have a party and do it up. But it's a doubtful matter. Okay. So you went from a community that was so fearing of Allah that wanted to practice the Quran and the Sunnah in its purest form, that they took the the, the safest route by just saying the Malad's haram, we're not going to do it. And he, your progression was to doing it one time without questioning it to doing it every year without questioning it, to making it a bigger and bigger celebration every year, you're shake doing this, to now you're a community that is so far away from the Quran and Sunnah that you make tawaf around shrines and graves. You make sajda to a dead person. Like, look at the extremes. Within It took Rasul for some 23 years to get rid of the ignorance and to bring true Islam to the Arabs at that time. 
And who knows exactly how long it took Mubarak Jelani to derail all these Muslims that were upon, to the best of their ability, the Quran and the Sunnah, to, to a community that is known for anybody that knows uh, TMOA or knows Mubarak Jelani in the United States and in Pakistan. You are a community that is, to sum it up, off of it. Where in, in Pakistan, the, the, the scholars and the, the students of knowledge in Pakistan, there's only two types, right? There's only two types in Pakistan, excluding anybody else that's in part, a part of Mubarak Jalani's family. There's one that have no idea who this guy is, never heard of him. The ones that do know him, who have heard of him, they say stay away from him because they don't practice proper Islam. This is where this is where this is your progression, really. I mean, mm -hmm. it's laughable. Yep. And uh, I put up the hadith about doubtful matters. Uh, so I'm the authority of um, Abu Abdullah Law uh, Ibn Bashir, who said, "I heard the Messenger of Allah so long as some say that which is lawful is clear, and that which is unlawful is clear, and between the two of them are doubtful or ambiguous matters uh, about which not many people are knowledgeable." Thus, he who avoids these doubtful matters certainly clears himself in regard to his religion and his honor. But he who falls into the doubtful matters falls into that which is unlawful, like the shepherd whose pastures avoid sanctuary, mm -hmm. all but grazing therein. Verily, every king has a sanctuary, and a law sanctuary is his pro prohibition. In the body, there is a morsel of flesh, which is, which if it be sound, all the body is sound, and which if it is diseased, all the body is diseased. That part of the body is the heart. Sahih Bukhari and Muslim. So just, if you can avoid that yeah, matters, then you should. So we can skip some of these, I think, because we covered a lot. I think we could jump all the way to um, go to go to 17, 18. All right. Just so we can have one cl a clear one of of her mentioning how they had apprehension of doing this. So, so that we would do this and we opened up to everybody. But remembering how the first one where there may have been apprehension, like what are our neighbors going to say? What are people going to say? Look how we're. OK, so right there, she mentioned apprehension. Right. So, again. We mentioned that, that there is, you know, different opinions on the Milad, right? Um, and so to, to hear how the people of the Dar, because they came from the Dar Islam, and then Barjali the is like, "Hey, come do this, uh, come, come have this parade, bring the lights, uh, do this Darul." I'm saying in, in Urdu English, uh, and go from there and celebrate this, right? It's apprehension. So there's right there, there's doubt in her mind, and probably for a lot of the minds of the members of the former Dar Islam now, uh, now, mm -hmm. now of Jamaat Al Fukra. So they would have, they should have just left it alone and said, we're not doing this. But because again, no. I mentioned this um, during Shahrazad's uh, third episode, right? How he wasn't there anymore, right? So this, the torch that carried on for his his uh, first uh, arrival 40 years ago was all the old heads. So that had they just stopped it, he wasn't coming back to, 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 like, to check on y'all. He wasn't gonna come say like, hey, are y'all following yep. me again? Y'all could have blocked his number <laughs> and moved on <laughs> it. And none of this would have happened. Yeah. And you know, you know, what I think also plays into this as well is that during that time frame, so a lot of these, especially the older generation, they come from a time period. I forget the exact phrase, but it was like anti-culture. Right. Mm -hmm. So like African-Americans were trying so hard to go against societal norms. A lot of them became Muslim because of this. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not doing the Christian thing. That's, you know, I'm going to do the Muslim thing that's against. And then they would also like dress outside of the culture. That's when they started wearing like the African type clothes or the Muslim type clothes and the they wanted to do anything that was against like the mainstream. It was like a, it was like a form of, of protesting or rebellion, right? And and in everyday context, we we see people that have this as part of their nature, right? And we all and, and as African Americans, we kind of have it part of our nature just naturally because of just the stuff we've been through through generations, right? But like, for instance, there'll be there'll be people who, if everybody's getting an iPhone, right, just because they don't want to be like everybody else, big Android energy, all right, yes, <laughs> or or it, it could be vice versa, whatever like yeah. the thing is, right, and it could yeah. be something good, right. Say everybody is doing this one thing, and just because they want to be different, exactly. they will refuse to do the, that thing and do something different. So like, you look at this. And they're looking at all the rest of the Muslims around the United States, yes. and it makes them feel special. Oh, we're doing this. No one else is doing it. We have something special. We have something different. And it 
that mindset plays into that. And now they're really like in, and you have your cult leader telling you like, Oh, you guys are special. You guys are mm-hmm. the cream of the, the crop. One. You're better yeah. than the Sahabas and your guaranteed paradise and all that real quick. I got, I, if, if this person's watching um, or anybody that has this mindset where, especially if they're at this, uh, this hocus pocus meeting where Mubarak Jelani was possessed by Rasul Sallam and Rasul Sallam started speaking to them through his lips and he guaranteed y'all paradise. I don't have the, the reference, but does I in the Quran, it's in Surah Al-Baqarah, where the Jews said the same thing. And Allah has the perfect rebuttal for everything that we can find in the Holy Quran that y'all continue to do. Y'all think y'all guaranteed paradise? Allah says, then wish for death then. Wish for death. The same thing he told the Jews. If y'all yeah. think y'all guaranteed paradise, then wish for death. Because if you're guaranteed paradise, why would you stay another second here? Exactly. You know you're not guaranteed paradise. You know it. It's just, as Allah says in the Holy Quran, it's just your wishful thinking. Mm-hmm. All right, so what do we got next? Um, um, just, I guess MD said to do it. So he said, so again, later on in the video, she says, we did it just because Mubarak Jelani said to do it. So we already talked about that. Yeah. Um, she talks about how he took his time to build us up and then he told us to do it. That's you're on the right track. He took his time to break y'all down. Down, yes. So that y'all could after do you week, exactly yeah, what he said. Exactly. Because uh, so, so he didn't build y'all. All up. The, it's like a, all the old heads talk about this, like a dad that he taught them. Um, and I always, I always like to think about about that. Like what, like. Because respect a dad is, is, you know, generally a two way street. So, so, so he had to respect you and, and not think of you just as monkeys uh, in the first in the first place for him. To, for him, so like in reality, he really he really taught y'all obedience. Y'all just mistook it as a dad, like because yeah. he taught you to o- obey him and revere him. And so you guys have done this for forty years. Yeah, that's that's like, but when you boil it down, that's what it comes down to. Like, it's. A deep reverence, it's obedience, and also it's fear because yeah. a lot of them seem to still be scared of him, even though he's dead. I, I, I can assure you, I, I can assure you, right? If he comes back as a zombie, you can kill him, right? Uh, because he, he, he ain't moving that fast. So y'all can get rid of him because, like, you guys will be okay, all right? You should only be scared of a law. I know that he told y'all, fear a law or fear me. And some of y'all were like, that's crazy. But other people were like, eh, okay. Um, so. <laughs> If that didn't get to you, this shit should now. He is never coming back to life to come chastise you or tell you that what you're doing is wrong. Uh, his affairs now are, are for law, right? And so your affairs, when you pass, if you pass and you go back to a law with these beliefs um, and haven't denounced them at all, you guys are just, just trying to like, like okay, well, um, yeah, uh, Abu, you did a lot of great things as well. You can find the good in every situation possible. But the bad is still there. So you guys, you, you can't just avoid this. All right. Uh, so if uh, Allah says, listen, I will not forgive you if you die upon shirk. This is this is like the most merciful, the most kind. He'll forgive you for almost everything. Like if you commit a dina and get stoned to death, right? The uh, the stone to death is atonement for that sin. So when you die, that sin of dina isn't upon you. But if you die upon shirk, it's not like because Jaffa was talking to um Uncle Abu Jabbar and he was like, I'm sure if Allah wanted to forgive Shirky, he could. He already told you he was not gonna do it. Yeah, I remember that. A lot of people take that position. Yeah, you know, because um they have and it's it's because of our background, a lot of us have this, you know, Christian, Christian mentality towards yep. Islam. But like we just everything's just, just everything's just gonna be forgiven. Just just believe and you're gonna get forgiven. That is and the works. response to that for anybody that tells them that, like when you bring up shirk and how it's you any sin you could think of, any sin, right? Raping your mother, then murdering her, and then raping her dead body. May Allah protect us from all that. That is less of a sin than sure. shirk. Yeah. The the hadith that we have of the man who killed a hundred people, that is his killing of a hundred people is less of a sin than shirk. Sure. Yeah. Okay. And Whenever they respond to that, like, well, Allah could do whatever he, he wills. Yes, we know that. Allah is most powerful. Yes, we know that. Allah is most forgiving. Yes, we know that. And the response to that is, and Allah does not lie. Not lie. Yep. So when Allah says, I will not forgive shirk, that means he will not forgive shirk. 
And I can guarantee you that Allah will not forgive shirk because Allah has already told us that he wouldn't. Yep. Very simple. And uh, case in point to, to that, the Prophet Sallallahu uncle, right? If he, if he was going to forgive someone, right, for dying up on shirk, right? The person who cared for him, raised him, he surely him, right? So I can assure you, if he didn't forgive him, Ahlul Bayt, because y'all love Ahlul Bayt, right? Ahlul Bayt, right? You love him. Yeah. Love, 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 love all Ahlul Bayt, right? Just respect them. You not Ahlul Bayt, black few people. <laughs> if you die upon shirk, <laughs> if, if he didn't say the Prophet was uncle, y'all definitely cooked. All right? So, yeah. so, so, so you know what? Like, yeah. It's, it's crazy that you bring it up because you have people that are in TMOA that do not believe in this shirk stuff anymore, mm -hmm. right? They don't believe. And you, there's some narrations that talk about, you know, the the, the passing of uh, uh, um, Abu Talib, right? Yep. And he was about to pronounce Shahada. Yep. Like we know he's about to pronounce Shahada. Abu but Jahal didn't. was there and he, he was like, oh, he's about to take a Shahada. Stop. And he's like, are you going to abandon the religion of your fathers? Your right? fathers yep. And then he, and he didn't. So there's there's some narrations that basically say that, and I don't know if it's narration or hadith or it's the scholars inferring things, but if he was about to take shahada, that shows that Islam was actually in his heart, mm -hmm. right? He actually knew, just like y'all know, this stuff is false. But because he didn't take the actions to make himself knowingly clear of it he's still held accountable to his old beliefs and mm -hmm. we know that he's in hell and he has the lightest punishment, punishment in hell yep. and do you know what the lightest punishment of hell is i just read the top on this the lightest punishment is hell is that the people may law protect all of us from this the shoes are giving sandals yeah of coals right that's the lightest punishment they're just giving sandals of hot coals but the coals are so hot that they make your brains boil. They make your brains boil. That's the lightest punishment. So people are going to go to hell. May Allah protect us. People will go to hell that did not commit shirk. There will be people in hell that did not commit shirk. That just committed enough sins so that they didn't make it to paradise. Mm -hmm. And some of them are have, going to have that lightest punishment. Now, could I mean, now imagine the punishment of the one who committed shirk. May Allah protect us from this. And like this, when when someone comes to you, and I don't care whether you're out of TMOA, in TMOA, R2F, non-R2F, whatever, someone comes to you and says, Hey, you just committed shirk. You should stop and think like, tell me how. Listen to how they told you, and then really go look like, did I commit shirk? Yep. So that you can seek forgiveness if you actually did. We're telling y'all, y'all belief system is shirk, and y'all like, yeah, hey, listen to these guys, and they're just, they're just, they're just, um, they're just like them anyway. They're, yep. Yeah, we're, they're just, they're just mad at the shake, and you know this and that. We, this is not something you play around with. Like, imagine if we came to your house, right? I came and knocked on your door. I'm um, all of you listening, me, Amr, Mubarak. Anybody from R2F, all these people that, you know, you make posters of us, wanted ads and all these different things, right? Yeah, I spot that. We come, you, we knock, you hear a knock on your door. It's us, one of us. And we say, hey, um, there's a fire coming out your window upstairs. You know, fire in my house, I man. I, yeah. yeah, I guarantee you, y'all would say, really? And go upstairs and look. You would go upstairs and look to see if there's a fire, right? Rasulullah son, when he went before he when he first gave the message publicly, he called all the Muslims, especially his family. He stood up on a mountain, and he and I forget the exact words, but basically he's like, like, don't you guys trust me? Yes, you're the most trustworthy. You're the most trustworthy. If I told y'all there was an army behind me getting ready to attack, would you believe me? Of course we would believe you. Then as soon as he told them about Islam, they're like, yeah, we ain't listening to that. Uh huh. We 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 know y'all know us, and that you know that for the most part we're trustworthy people. You know that if 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 there was something that if we came to your house and told you it was on fire, you would believe us. But something that is more serious than that, more grievous than that, more detrimental to your life in this life and the hereafter, 
we're telling you that your religion is on fire. Yep. Your belief system's on fire. Your actions, your acts of worship are on fire. And you won't even answer the door. Yeah, that's that nigga. I ain't. You're going to burn down in the house. Mm -hmm. And it's getting too late. Like, like the sister said, and I'll end with this. The sister said, you know, all of, all of us of our age are passing away. Yep. And now it hurts. It generally hurts all of our hearts. Even though we clown on y'all, we joke on y'all, we laugh or whatever. This is just how African Americans do. Every time we hear that uncle so and so, brother so and so, Khalifa so and so passed away, away yep. it's like detrimental to us. Y'all have parties and honor them and this and that. And we generally like feel like, damn, man, I hope he didn't pass away on Wait, that belief. He's still believing that, yeah. I mean, I mean, Allah protect us all. Yeah. So, uh, do you want to finish this video or do you want to get into the Shirk song. Uh, let's let's uh we might as well we might as well just rock it out so that we can just I'm pretty sure between now and the next time we have a show, something else will come up that we gotta address. So we might as well just go ahead and jump into the shirk songs and we can do it quick because we're just gonna we're just gonna point out um these are songs that I guess are popular in TMOA. Some of and, them I've I've heard of before. Yeah, um uh, and ironically. The very first song I, I saw uh, was the um, I See Outlaw and You song. Um, and <laughs> and I remember having this song, I was having this conversation with my sister because uh, she was like singing the song. I was like, I mean, like, this song is definitely shirk, right? And she was she, she was like, every everything can't be shirk. It's because you're part of R2F armor. And I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, what does I See Outlaw and You mean to you? And before creation, yeah. it's like, she's like, yeah. Yeah. So, so exactly like, yeah it's it's what? so bad because like even even like people that are like yeah that seven soul time stuff is shirk but they're still in the juma they still go to juma and they sing the darut afterwards not even realizing what they're saying even like so like the first song so that's, i see a lot on you well yeah go to this we'll just go down what we'll are going on the list so fine okay. fee shake is the first one yeah oh okay. <laughs> so fine fi fee shake and and the thing is a stock for law these things are this is why we're not allowed to listen to music because these things are so catchy. Like, in my head, it's like ringing in my head. And I'm like, oh, this is Shirk. I got to get this out of my head. Fana Fee Shake, that is my goal. Fana Fee Shake means I want to become one with my shake. Yes, good right? for my soul. Right? Yeah, that's the goal. And then the song progresses, right? To become one with you, all right? Become one with the shake. Here then they go to I want to become not. one. <laughs> like, What's that? <laughs> it says here or here. So literally... They don't care about the dunya or paradise as long as long as they can become one with Marjolani, because yeah. it's here or hereafter means not. So 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 for them it doesn't mean anything. Whether as long as they, they can be close to their Moshe Hamil, all right, that is what they're striving for. And you're seeing because um, our brother Hani talks about this all the time about how instead of the Jamaat pushing folks learning, you know, uh, the Quran, surahs, hadiths, right. We learned these songs. We learned these songs that, that are just filled with shirk. Uh, and yeah. it's obviously when you're in the Jamaat, you don't know this because this is what you're raised upon. But when you take one step outside, it's like, oh, oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I was so kind of crazy. Final fee, this final fee concept is basically is a song. And this comes from like the Naqshbandi type teaching is like you become one with your shake. And then after you become one with your shake, you can become one. With Rasul Sai Salam. Then after you become one with Rasul Sai Salam, then you can become one with Allah, which this that whole annihilation. You can't become one with Allah. Allah is one by himself, right? He's all by himself. You're never gonna become one with him, right? You be he you can get to a station where Allah is very pleased with you and honors you and all, but you're not gonna become part of Allah. This does not happen. Okay, it's shirk. So, and you see in here, there's different, like when he talks about the Fokker is the path of full light, that's yes. the seven sultan concept. Shirk, mm -hmm. we already know that. Distinguishing the wrong from the right. Clearly you're not, if you're seeking this long. Uh, and then, so not only do they want you to become one with the shape, you also have to come on for Sula Salah Islam. Um, and then, yeah. Like, it's, it's, uh, yeah, <laughs> cool. so let's just go over the next one. All right. <laughs> it's, it's so, it's so crazy. I mean, it's. So they have the next song, Praiseworthy Muhammad, which is, I didn't find anything wrong with that one. I kind of skimmed through it. The next one is Ya Rasul Salam, take my hand. Ya Habibullah. 
this is not where uh yeah listen all, all these songs which about are, are are so so annoying because i know like most of these things still even though i haven't sung songs in years it's just like it's just stuck in my head it's like okay well yeah oh my god especially darwood taj uh and and um the, the thing you do after after the Jamaat. so bahu reaches destination he is completely submerged in the abdul qadir jelani tanas in the ya has make dua for me all right the mujaddid uh, listen listen this song is so old right but Again, for those people saying, oh, he wasn't that. The Mujaddid of this century, all right? So the 21st century, all right? Or 22nd, 20, Morshid, Morshid Khamil, to lead me to the, he resides where I long to be, El Sheikh Jelani, blessed is he, all right? Um, please accept the sacrifice from me in hope of the union with thee. First of all, <laughs> why is this written like freaking Shakespeare? What the hell is, what, what were y'all on, bro? Ya Jilani, Shah Jilani, you guide us wherever you are. Uh, guide us wherever you are. Uh, yeah, only a law guides you wherever you are. Yeah, that's that's they hold a mercy um, to the world. Look, so yeah, the mercy you to the, the world. You are the reason for leaving. Yeah. Uh, you are the first of all, they spell you anyway. Um, it's why are you possibly already but anyway? You are <laughs> reason for living. Uh, if if he is the reason for you guys living, yeah, oh yeah, Allah. Well, I mean, these these songs like kind of spell out what what their 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 pillars of their religion are yeah and it's like, all about mubarak jelani okay wait so know? let's go to this song real quick and see how many times does it say say, say a law's name <laughs> it's not, all right so you see uh, <laughs> a law's name is said one time right here okay um and then that's it so you said jelani's yeah. name about a thousand times <laughs> yeah, about jelani, like, yeah, yeah, jelani, jelani, yeah, but a law's name is said like one time so yeah this it's, this tells you because um in the jamaat right uh, they have this whole like moniker of uh, you don't uh, you you don't speak unnecessarily, right? You don't say things unnecessarily, and the only thing that that should that should be on your mind at all time is breathe Allah exhale who, right? This was yeah. a, a widespread thing, but this song right here, so there's no way y'all singing this song and, and breathing Allah exhale who because everything <laughs> you're breathing is is, is Shah Jelani, Shah, Shah so, Jelani, yeah. But, you know, yeah Allah. Let's see. So the next one we we've been honored. honored with the sixth light of Noor. All right. Yep. So that's seven soul time church time, yeah. song again. I see a law on you. That's yeah. the <laughs> before yep. create. Yeah, this is the whole seven soul time belief. Like even if you okay, well, it's not what it says no. The the step the style rule he covers all of this, and, and we, we yep. have a whole publication. It's like fourteen pages covering all the um the shirk in the mm -hmm. style rule. People are still to this day like, oh well, I don't I don't know if the shirk is out of there. Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, like, just like use a little common sense. Yeah, like, there's a certain amount of logic. You know, laws law says so many times in the Quran, like. Think, use your mind, right? Use your common sense. Before creation, what is the only thing that existed before creation? Allah. Allah. So once anything else existed after Allah, Allah had to create it. So that means that's when creation started. So no matter when these boogeymen were created, <laughs> they were part of creation. They were the created. The seven Dagon spawned from Shinran. Like, Otherwise, something else had to be creating them. Then, then if you're saying that all these individuals existed before creation, that means they're uncreated. That means Allah didn't create them. That means you're putting them on the same level as Allah. So for for just, you guys, oh, this uh, starting to get you guys open up your eyes. You guys get mad. We get all these messages like you guys laugh too much. You guys joking on you. Oh, you're insulting this and that. Blah blah. blah. You are insulting Allah and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You are lying on Allah and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And you have the nerve to contact us about us our giggling or busting a joke every now and then. This Look at y'all sing this crap. Amr's sister was just singing. We have to check her. <laughs> no, nah, this is like this is like months ago. I was like, I mean, there's just oh, no okay, way. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, <laughs> so it's, fam, like, I long to see and I love more shit. Like, go, go fly overseas. He's only on the video. Yeah. Um, Shirk put a box of time on your front door. I'm pretty like, sure. Put some man. cookies by the chimney. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna spawn in right there. Oh my god! Uh, and they're they're so. Uh, is is do they have do Tata here for after Juma or no? No, they didn't. They didn't have. The, I think that I don't know. They didn't have the do I know they have the so like do it e ha habibi. I started to look up stuff on that. That that's the one that said kum kum ya habibi, well, habibi come come to to yeah. Basically. What that means is come back to life. That's what that 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 Nashid is saying. Come back to life. life. 
right? So uh, I, I, I so some is not coming back to life. We're all coming back to life at the day of judgment, but um, I, I don't know what I, I so I didn't pay too much attention. But the, we have the next one was it my beloved Morshid, yeah. or my I just highlighted this one because I was reading it and the only it was so weird that the only thing that it reminded me of is like you were you were supposed to have like this type of love not for like a shake right like it's just just this weirdness that to how much love they act like they had for their shake but we know it's all bull crap because as soon as he passed away they started to talk about you know my morshida my morshida oh, i love you so much as soon as they could like they yeah. the changing up of the guard happened so like even if the queen of england had a, a longer stay <laughs> as like okay well, she's the monarch queen of england racist lady uh, yeah. and took some time for them to switch over. It was like he passed away finally. This this man mm-hmm. gone. Josh Aka Um Noor. Uh indeed. Oh, go to page 18. Go to page 18. Okay. Go to um the Sea of Ish. Because I had to touch on this real quick. Um so if you have time ever if anyone wants to do a research project, look at the meaning of ish, right? You know, Arabic is the, the most profound language that we have, right? That that exists today. And um there's different words that mean different things, right? Even though they may be similar meetings. So, like for instance, um, you know, you ever you ever heard anybody? For those who are out there, think about how you he- heard someone say, um, "Ibrahim was Khalilullah, but Rasul Sallam is Habibullah," right? Like like showing that Rasul Sallam is higher in the in the, that Allah, the love that Allah has for Rasul Sallam is higher than the love that He had for Ibrahim. Right, but Khalil, Habib, they have similar meanings, but it's not the same. And it's actually yeah. ignorance when people say this because Khalil is a higher form of love than a Habib, right? And we have hadith that Rasulullah is a Khalil of Allah, and so is Ibrahim alayhi salam. So the thing with Ishq, it relates also to like the word love, love yeah, yeah. Habib. However, Ishq is a type of love that is also associated with like sexual desire. And this is what you're singing about to Allah. Like the ignorance, like you're like this relates to like sexual desires. And you're talking about your ishq. May Allah protect us and associating these words. There's certain things you don't attribute to Allah. I mean, yeah. just, just know what you're saying. You guys, are, or they heard a nice word. Have no idea what it means. Let's make a song out of it. It's just really sad. Adores adore you, oh beautiful who. And who, for anybody? Uh, anyway, I'm not gonna get into that one. That's a longer one. So <laughs> let's see. <laughs> um, the green birds. I, I highlighted that one because people actually think so. In New York, right? There's you probably have them down south too. We have these like little green birds up here, mm-hmm. right? They're just like little Tweety birds, but they happen to be like greenish in color greenish or yellow um and people would see them on the land and actually think that they were martyrs coming to visit the land oh yeah oh look at the martyrs are here right and it's like uh no those are just like green birds <laughs> oh green um in birds, that song let's go to the court what the court of rasul say song another made up stuff basketball court um the queen of nor um just talking about um fatima radiallahu anha but in there it says, indeed, she was, she was the very, very first, first sultana. sultana. Yeah. So, sultana, again, imama. seven sultans. So, um, what's the, like, the, like, a woman version of, like, a khalifa? Because I'm sure that they're working their way to have the first, like, woman khalifa in, in TV. Because like, they already had the first, first imama. So, so like, <laughs> the first khalifa, she's about to be, she's about to be out here adorning the affairs of the, the people. She just might just claim to be a sultan, like she just might steal it from her son. I'm about to say, Man, actually, um, well, Nor, go for I, it. Go for I'm it. Just, I mean, because it's clear that Nor doesn't really want to do this. Like he's not trying to take over the family business. Um, and <laughs> he wants to just chill and you know, like become yeah. a better Muslim in whatever way he can, and you know, do what he needs to do, work his cars. Uh, so listen, oh, Nor, <laughs> at this point, right? They're like you know, eating from your hand. They love you, well, right? You know, it's probably, you know, since it's all made up anyway, we can make up how it works too, right? So I, I just watched, uh, we went out and seen Black Adam last night, mm-hmm. right? 
And um, so for anybody who's into like comics or whatever, right? I was told I went to the movies. I was told that every movie theater has a gin inside of it, and the gin possesses you if you go to see them. If you go to see, yeah, the same gin that followed me from my house that's with me all the time too. We all have, we all have a gin with us. So yeah, it went to the movies with us too. Maybe they enjoyed it. Uh huh. So, but but basically, he Black Adam has like the same power as Shazam, right? Mm -hmm. But how the went, how the movie went is that. Spoiler alert. (laughs) Black Adam's son, it's it's part of the, it's part of just this backstory. There's no spoiler. Uh-huh. Black Adam's son was a Shazam, but he transferred the power to his dad. What? So, Nor, go ahead and Shazam that Sultan power to your mother. That way she can Shazam <laughs> Fatima <laughs> and them in court, get all <laughs> y'all money, and take over the Jamaat, and then she'll be the seventh Sultana. It started with a female. It'll end with a female. Exactly. One of a kind. Never before seen because, as Jaffer said, it's all make-believe. So you can make up the rules as you go along. It's like playing games with kids, all right? If you ever play games with kids, right, there is a set rules that the kids have in their mind. And the second that they start losing at all, the rules change. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's, like, it's no fear. Um, she always what puts her got? family first. She's the queen of the universe. Nobody in the Jamaat. Which one of y'all ladies put y'all family before the Jamaat or your shake? None That's of y'all. Uh, what else yeah, we got here? These songs Where are you are terrible. At? Jesus. <laughs> no, I was reading them. I was like, I don't even remember. Like, what's the our king of, these? of Karbala. Like, fam, there's no way I would hear someone say this. Like, if, if Ibrahim Kaba or or Kari Isman was singing this song, like, bro, there's just no way I listen to that jazz. It's absolute garbage. <laughs> I, I go listen to music again before I listen to this garbage. Bro. <laughs> oh, thinkers, thank him and thank our above. So, uh, again, putting uh, your shake on. In the same sentence as your God, just tells you all you really, really need to know. Um, for the Sultan, son of Nora Law, what? Well, hold on, what? Yeah, man. So basically, right. I, I think what they're saying is son of. They're talking about Rasul Sallam, talking about he's the Norahullah, <laughs> and that he's their son, basically meaning a descendant. But I mean, again, I don't know how old this song is, but they're talking about the seven sultans and all that bull crap. Ya Hashima, you were a sultan of light. Ya sultan born in the sixth ocean of light. What? Okay. Let's see. Yeah, look at look at down here though, where he starts talking about the white hawk. No. <laughs> yes, flies the white hawk. Two rainbows follow. The rivers <laughs> talk. The flowers bloom with Isam who all of this because of you. So all this <laughs> rainbows, white hawks flying, rivers, and flowers blooming happens because of. Mubarak Jelani. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He gets right. gifts from the next world. So he's Bruh. going to the he's going to the next world. He's going to the hereafter and coming back with like Names. Rolex watches. Yeah. <laughs> Cause he, he certainly because cause as we know, Jopper, Mubarak Jelani um never spent the money that he got and received um from the community for his own selfish worldly needs. All right. Yeah. It wasn't to <laughs> buy mansions in Pakistan or to have the Rolex that his, his daughter had or cars and stuff like that. He gave it all away to charity. That is why at his yeah. janazah, him being such a big philanthropist in Pakistan, <laughs> right? Um, there was mi- every Pakistani orphan ever who he, he fed from all the schools in, in Pakistan came to his janazah, clearly. Um, and everything that he got was a gift from Allah. But look, the only gift that I remember him sending was those, those, those dirty, must have cost like a half a rupee, Rings that he used to send over, <laughs> those gaudy nasty, like you know, like he, he went there with one dollar and bought off the whole stand in Pakistan no, and sent him no, over uh, for people. Uh, I remember no way they rings. came from the next world. Um, uh, I remember those rings because I remember a brother went overseas to Pakistan in Virginia and he like purchased a bunch of those rings, right? And then he came back uh-huh. and, and sold them on Juma and called them Sufi rings, and they were like ten dollars a piece, right? <laughs> And folks were buying them by, by the bundle. And I remember someone like bought it and like they're like, yeah. they're, like part of the finger where the ring was out, it turned green. Cause, cause it's like, 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 yeah. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Oh gosh. So what was the worst the next one? Oh, so here's on page 39. So he says, Ya Sultan, just by sitting with you, seekers find my drunkenness conscious. in who? Alcohol. So when we're talking about Allah, when you're trying to refer to something, referring to Allah, why would you use words that are associated with sins drunk you were drunk you know with with Allah like 
these things are not befitting of Allah. And then also, because this is one of the things that a lot of like goofy Sufis use in their poetry. They use words like intoxicated, drunkenness, and these different things. And they actually associate it with like a high level of like worship that you're worshiping so much that you kind of like lose your mind, right? But it's so it's so simple because one of the pillars of prayer, of worship, is that you're sane, <laughs> is that you are of the right mind. Rationalize right? it. So yeah. if you are like drunk or like say you went temporarily insane, you cannot. I mean, you can, but your prayer is not accepted. It doesn't count for anything. You have to be of a state mind, like. I, this stuff is just so silly when you just look at it and oh my goodness. By Page 40, you, he the says first that day have... I found my love of who, as I believe Allah's Jamaat descended on you, Jah Sultan, the Mujahid that fights alongside of you, finds residence in the stomachs, definitely stomachs, all right, of the green birds. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say something. <laughs> I had to read that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. All right. You have, to, wait, hold on. You have taught us and made us teachers. All right, now what listen, teachers? As someone who went to the Jamaat schools, right? Good, good one on them. I can I can assure you, <laughs> if that's what he taught you, <laughs> and then proceeded <laughs> to teach me, yeah, yeah, terrible job. Because I because I went to college, I was like, huh? <laughs> what is this? Well, let's 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 just look at it. 40 years. Do we have in 40 years has Mubarak Jelani produced any teacher? that is recognized by anybody outside of the Jama'at as being a teacher of any type of Islamic studies? Nope. And that answer is no, he, he has not. Even like if any of these people that um, allegedly graduate from Azhar, that if they do start teaching and they do get credentials to actually teach people, that means they were produced by Azhar. Azhar. Yeah, not a uh, whole bar Jelani. He didn't Any, produce uh, anything. Other Islamic school, because uh, yeah, I say go, this all the time. Go to uh, he wasn't uh qualified to teach y'all anything. So this idea uh, is that it? Uh, well, so this it, think about it. it. We have um, what is the channel's name? What is the guy's name? The Norse Norse YouTube channel. Norse right? channel. Yeah. You want to see? So like you have the the the, the his son, whose direct connection with Mubarak Jelani who should be like Mubarak Jelani is like prime focus. Like I need to make sure you're ready because, because you're going to take Sultan. over the Jamaat. Yeah, exactly. You're the seven Sultan. I'm like, my attention is going to go to you, right? Because I got to make sure you're ready. So his prize student, his top student, go to Nora's YouTube page and then see what Mubarak Jelani has produced. <laughs> yeah. And this is the thing too, like, cause uh, uh, I think some of the other sons like, Oh yeah. Like, uh, our father never talked to us about the business and whatever the hell. Uh, that definitely listen. That could be true in a sense, but one thing I know for sure about fathers when they're in your life, they love to tell you about what they have going on, and they love to teach you things <laughs> about what they they do. So me, I had no interest at all in in doing construction, right? But I know a lot about construction because my father does that. Like he's doing <laughs> so. I know how to use all the power tools, cutting stuff, saws, all like all the things, putting up walls, drywall. So all that I learned from just from being proximity to my father right so dad's love to have you do this stuff so there's no way that <laughs> there's no way that if Mubarak Jelani's skills yeah. were that oh he is a great uh mujaddid teacher student of knowledge all this stuff right he's so knowledgeable that his kids will be this like misguided and, and having to just like what does this mean they should know because he's supposed to be the person right um yeah. for example Jaffer's kids are going to be very educated Islamically because both of the, both of his parents are, are a lot like that. All right, Jaffer, Insh but, Inshallah. So, in, in, inshallah. I mean, I mean, but like just knowing y'all, like I know for sure, lately anybody about to have the kids is going crazy. So like, so, so like just by association from your parents, you pick up things, and so yeah. you see what they picked up from their father because they're not very knowledgeable on things that happen in, in, in the Islamic world. Um, so if yeah. the father, if the father was, they would have, even, even if they weren't like, okay, yeah, it's just, I'm talking to us. They would have some knowledge here and there, which they didn't seem to yeah. show the, the most knowledgeable one, one they have, uh, is, uh, Fa, 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 uh, and she admits that she had to learn <laughs> that herself. Yeah. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah. Straight up. It'll be, you know what, Nor Fatima, whoever, anyone, one of his kids, 
I would love for y'all to, you know, make a video and teach the world about the seven sultans. Oh, you know, just do it. Like, this is, this is your father's legacy. This is his, you know, he, this is who he says he is. And this is what he swindled Jama on is this whole thing of the six sultan him being the six sultan and the seven. So please make a video and uh, teach the world about it. You know, since this is like a crux to being in, TMOA and you know your father was this alleged great teacher and influencer and uh whatever else you guys are saying about this guy um go ahead you know make make the video about the seven sultans we'll see what it comes up with i wish like um, in a, a, like a, a not as serious thing if we could have a, a game show it's like do you know more than joffer about like Jelani? it's just it's just every <laughs> member of the jamaat versus joffer and like a quiz and it's just like puts a button for see who see who knows more and Jaffa has has like all the proof <laughs> it's like yeah sorry this is wrong too it's just hurt <laughs> you know it, it, it's funny because um the, the the thing that these type of people do is because it, it translates even just like the whole thing of the Jamaat the Jamaat you do not need proof for anything mm-hmm. right all you need is status and then that's your proof right and so, like, even when you're debating with Jamaat people, and I've had, I've had debates with the, the highest levels of administration, and we would debate about, like, they would, I'll, <laughs> I remember when they called me to a meeting about the social media thing, when Mubarak Jelani declared it haram, right? And I made a status about, like, this is hypocritical because all of Mubarak Jelani's uh, leaders are on social media, right? So, anyway, we had a debate. We're going back and forth, and they're trying to tell me what Shasab said. I said, no, he didn't. What do you mean he didn't? I said, no, in this discourse, you know, within the first 15 minutes, he said, blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, you know, um, he says this. I said, no, he didn't. Like, we were just going back and forth. I was telling him, like, what Mubarak Jelani was saying. And no, he would know what he didn't say. But what they do every single time is because Mubarak Jelani says a lot of crap, contradicts himself all the time. They would just say something that he supposedly told them directly with no verification. So everything is unverified. Everything is not authentic. And they say whatever they want. So they would still just win the game because they would just say, well, in the dream I had on December 5th in 1983, Jelani came to me as a white hawk. And I seen not two rainbows, three rainbows with flowers growing out of it. And he told me that I could drink alcohol. Okay, buddy. Have fun that's what that you want to do. By all means, I can just <laughs> self up. I don't know if that's the best course of action. Uh, but <laughs> 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 By all means, whatever's you. No, but uh, on like a serious point, um, you see, and we, this is the whole point of this, is that whenever we see these things, things come up and people, because the whole idea um, of this is that folks are trying to reshape a narrative, right? The, the narrative is already mm-hmm. set. There's nothing like, I don't care if it's some old head, some other old head, some middle-aged person, some person my age. I don't care who comes out and says things. The narrative is already set, right? Um, and unless you can just prove the narrative that, hey, Marjolani didn't teach a shirt when... We have already proved it beyond a shadow of a doubt. There, there isn't, this isn't the Milad. There isn't like some doubt here. Uh, no, no, no. This is 100% certain. All the mm-hmm. things that, that are said about the Seven Sultan, the Fuker, uh, all, all these claims, fear of law, fear of me, all this control of gens, this has already been proven, all right, without a shadow of a doubt by, by the, the, source, the sources that you guys would use to uh, try and deny this we use to claim that this is this is absolutely wrong. And mm-hmm. um, you guys haven't even made an attempt to try to disprove this. Like saying, okay, well, um, in the Quran here, it says this. In the Hadith here, it says this. To try to even justify your beliefs or previous beliefs, if you guys don't believe it anymore. Um, instead, mm-hmm. you're trying to just uh, mosey around it and try to forget it ever happened. Uh, and then yeah. try to just say, but yeah, man, there were so many good times here with Mark Jelani. No, in reality, the good times that you have envisioned in your mind were times where you were upon church. So how good were the times in reality? And that's something you have to like come to grips with. Like, okay, yeah, sure, it seems good because um, I was there for eat and I was wearing my best clothes. Uh, I had sister so-and-so make the clothes for me. She also made my kufi f- 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 for me. I had on some fresh Nikes and we went to the retreat. Everyone got in the car and there was my friends there. There was my food. There was Aqua, there was Janae. Everyone's here. I had a great time. We had food. We ran around as kids, all this stuff, right? But in reality, those times you were there, you were upon shirk. Um, and, and so I, I can't like, I can't emphasize this enough because for a lot of people until you experience something, you don't really know how bad it is. Um, so yeah. once you get to learn more about your religion, 
um, and just take the steps to just try to learn more about it a lot. When you, when you get to like learn about Cirque and fully understand how bad it is, that's when you can say, dang, I was like, because uh, uh, it's mm -hmm. scary because like they, uh, for a while there, and this applies for everyone in the Jamaat, for a while there, you were, you were up on Cirque. Um, and so you, yeah. you don't have an understanding of how bad it is. And so until you do, it, it can seem like, okay, this is fine. I will go back if, if I could. Uh, no, yeah. this is something you want to be far, far away from. That's, that's why people are like, um, would you come back to Jamaat? No, never. Period. Uh, it's not, not something that I, I'm trying to do. Uh, it's not like no. I'm bitter about anything. Uh, so the narrative, like, okay, you can say, okay, well, Joffrey's bitter because of his ex. And Mubarak might be bitter because he was part of the administration and he's not. What do you what do you, what do you say about me? Because I wasn't. Uh, none of that. That's what happened to me. I didn't have any other like super traumatic stuff. Uh, everyone loved me, so I don't have any of that. Uh, I just know it's wrong, so I'm speaking about it. You're possessed. <laughs> yeah, he watches anime. I watch anime. I'm possessed. <laughs> if, if that is what you guys have to say, a humble law, because that means that, that that you have nothing to stand on. That's it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but what you said touches on something. It just reminds you, like even. You know, this sister, um, I used to be very close with their family. Like their, their family was like the first connection I made when I first started coming around the Jamaat. I was like, her son used to be one of my best friends, you know, growing up, um, even until adulthood, you know, very close friends. And yeah, I look, you know, I look back at it like every, it was like almost like a tradition because like when the first ease I used to go to, you know, she used to make, she, she made a breakfast. She, they make, they make breakfast. Like that's like their family thing. They make breakfast mm -hmm. every eve, and it became like a tradition, but before like their family, like the sons and stuff and daughters took, took it over doing that type of tradition. It was her. She would have breakfast almost every eve. And I remember going there and, you know, she made this little thing. It's called, I guess, Suji. First time in my oh, life I, I ever had it. Thing. Anyway. <laughs> so I loved it. Like, it was like, what really? is this? This stuff is okay. amazing. Right. Um, and I loved her breakfast, loved her suji, and she would make it make it for me. How many lot? She would make suji for me like almost every eve, you know, and it was like a thing. But you know, looking back, like I look back at that, and it's like, man, I love those times. I loved those early eves, and when everybody was like this one big family, everybody's door was open, and you had fun, and all. Yeah, you look back, and you're like, you're like man, that was such a. I wish we can go back to that, but I wish y'all could go back to that, and then also leave away the shirk and the bid there and the oppression. And all those different things, you know, and it's sad because these same people that I had this relationship with that many of us have relationships with, we couldn't even talk yeah. nowadays. Right. Like, and I would urge, like, you know, if there's any type of, you know, um, anything there for, for this sister, um, for her children that I used to be close with, reach out to me, let's have a conversation. And, you know, at the end of the conversation, we might still disagree about something, you know, whatever, but you know, at least for law's sake, for for those old times, for the sake of those old times, let's let's give it a shot. Maybe you can correct me and get me on the right path. And if if that's what you, what you can do, you know. But like you said, like the sister had said, like your sheikh allegedly told you way back in 1980 or 81, have it be supported with the Quran and the Hadith, so that you can make sure that what you're saying is correct. And what I am saying is correct. Mm -hmm. And I will hold you to that. And I will hold myself to that. You know, so that's all I got to say. I don't know if there's any questions anywhere that we could yeah. answer. Not that but, I um, saw. No, I think we're good. Okay. You want to close the armor? Yes. Subhanallah. Alhamdulillah. Wallahi wa Wallahu Akbar. Wallahu Akbar. Wallahu Akbar.